He carried his cross to Golgotha. He suffered, he gave up his blood. It was more than enough, quite sufficient to cover my sin like a flood. God poured my sin into Jesus. Put righteousness where sin had been. Now there's no condemnation to this new creation, for I am made righteous in Him. His blood. His blood did remit all my sin. It remains and it flows like a river, purging again and again. God poured my sin into Jesus. Righteousness where sin had been. Now there's no condemnation to this new creation, for I am made righteous in Him. He carried His cross to Golgotha. He suffered, he gave off his blood. It was more than enough, quite sufficient to cover my sin like a flood. God poured my sin into Jesus. Righteousness where sin had been. Now there's no condemnation to this new creation, for I am made righteous in Him. His blood not only did cover. His blood did remit all my sin. It remains and it flows like a river, virgin again and again. God poured my sin into Jesus. Put righteousness where sin had been. Now there's no condemnation to this new creation, for I am made righteous in Him. God poured my sin into Jesus. Righteousness where sin had been. Now there's no condemnation to this new creation, for I am made righteous in Him. I am made righteous in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God that we are made righteous in Him. Mm -hmm. And we welcome you to another episode of Just Like Him. I'm Shamma, and I'm here with my sister Shalom. And we're truly delighted to bring to you the Word of God. 
encourage you and believe that you will be blessed today. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And this song also talks about how whatever Jesus suffered on the cross, how he did all that just for us. And he paid the price for sin. And he himself bore all of our sins and our sicknesses and our diseases and everything, even our poverty and our shame and our guilt, so that we could live a life of victory, so that we could live an eternal um, enjoy an abundant and blessed life. Yeah, that's what we were talking about last time. Mm. We were talking about everlasting life. Mm. And from the beginning of these episodes, we've been talking about how much God loves you very much. Yeah. And you may have not heard that, but we want to repeat it over and over again. God mm. truly loves you. And He wants to have a relationship with you, unlike any other relationship. Mm. Because the relationship that you have with, with God Almighty it's going to set you free. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be, you're going to have this life and journey um, enjoying joy and peace because no man can give you that. Yeah. Only God can truly give you that. And eternal life also, um, life in Christ Jesus helps us to overcome problematic situations that we are facing in our lives daily and things like that we're struggling with on a daily basis. Mm. You know, even talking about unforgiveness, you know, Jesus can help you if you have had, you know, not a good past. Jesus can help you with your past hurts and failures and He can even help you forgive those who have wronged you mm. and who have done mistakes and even the problems that we are facing sometimes that can seem so overwhelming. See, Jesus, He provided a life for us to enjoy so that even in the midst of troubles you know we can still say Lord Jesus I thank you for your help mm. and I thank you for the victory you know Jesus said I have overcome the world and he said be of good cheer overcome the world simply means everything that is in the world you have victory over it mm. and you are a powerful being you're no longer supposed to see yourself as a nothing and as a nobody because Jesus has given you victory See, there's a scripture in 1 John chapter 4, and it says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's talking about God's Spirit living on the inside of us that enables us and gives us the ability to overcome life's challenges yeah. that we face. I like that you said to overcome life's challenges. Yeah. Because in our own strength, we can't overcome anything. Yeah. That's the reason we need this everlasting life. Yeah. It gives you the ability to overcome life's challenges. Yeah. You don't have to try to uh, struggle to overcome it. God inside of you is going to help you. Mm. And you mentioned the scripture, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Truly, God living on the inside of you, when you have received him, you are going to be a powerful person on this earth. Yeah. Life is not going to try to control you unless you let it. But if you realize who you are on the inside, that you have received this overcoming ability, mm. you will be able to overcome life's challenges mm. by that's, the grace of God. Yeah, that's the, the powerful thing about this song that we were singing. And um, I just want to read this scripture in 2 Corinthians 5. We'll start with verse 17 and then we'll also go back to was, we'll start from 17 and go to verse 21. It says, Therefore, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What this scripture is saying is, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a new creature. In mm. Christ Jesus. A new person. Yeah. And new creature refers to um, some life that you have never lived before. Yeah. Right. It's a new life that you have received. And one of the greatest things we can realize is that this scripture says, all things have passed away. Mm. That is an awesome truth. Yeah. All things have passed away. Yeah. The old life that you used to live is gone completely when you mm. receive Jesus into your life. Right. It says, if any man is in Christ. Mm. I love the fact that God's word uses words like any man, whoever. Yeah. It doesn't limit it to some people. No. It doesn't say, well, some people have done good things and so they deserve everlasting life. Yeah. But the people who've done mean things, well, 
they have to struggle and maybe God might see their struggle and give them everlasting mm. life. Yeah. It's a good thing about God. He doesn't look at all those things and yeah. determine whether in you fact, need everlasting life. In fact, He looks at Jesus, mm. what Jesus did for us. Yeah. Because see, the scripture says, in Christ, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and what He did for you, you get put into Christ. And so now God doesn't see you based on who you are or who you were, mm. according to our outward image, but God sees us through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus lived a perfect, sinless, pure life. He was able to pay the price for our sin. And therefore, we put into Jesus Christ, God sees us that way. Mm. He sees the righteousness. Um, righteousness simply means a right relationship with God yeah. and um, right to stand before God. Yeah. So God sees that and when He looks at you, He says, yes, you're accepted because of what Jesus did. Yeah. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God no longer sees you as a sinner. He sees you as a new person, That's a new right. creature in Christ. That's what happens when you receive Jesus. It says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. So maybe you receive Jesus Christ into your life and you don't know much what has become of you. Mm. Well, the first thing you can know when you receive Jesus, you become a new person. Yeah. You're completely new. God doesn't see you the way you were once before. He sees you as a new person, mm. new creature it mentions here. Yeah. And the other part says all things are passed away. In yeah. other words, your old life that you used to live is gone, yeah. right? What really happens is, you know, it's interesting how when you get born again, it's a nature change that happens on the inside of you, mm. right? It's not d complicated to understand. All God does is He removes your old nature, which was mm. sin. He removes it out of yourself, out of your heart and he puts his nature on the inside of you, mm. right? That is a new nature. And the yeah. thing about us, we don't have to understand no. the transaction that happened. You know, God taking out our old nature and putting in God's nature is we receive it by faith. Mm. All we have to do is simply believe. God did the transformation. He uh, made us new creatures in Christ. It was his operation. Mm. And we don't have to understand it. God, how did you do that? What are all the methods behind it? We don't have to. We simply have to say, Lord, I accept what you did by faith. That's believing in God. Yeah, that's how easy work. it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, before you had Jesus, you, you had the right to call yourself a sinner and a no good. Yeah. But when you come to Jesus, you don't need to call yourself that anymore. You can say, I'm a new person. Mm -hmm. I am worth in God's sight, yeah. right? And you can sometimes, if maybe even after you've received Jesus in your life, and all those thoughts are coming back, well, I was such a bad person in the past and how can God still see me as a new person? Well, when those thoughts come, remember, God doesn't put those thoughts. Like we said earlier, God's thoughts are always good to you, yeah. right? He has only good things planned for you. So you definitely can't imagine God's not gonna say, you're no good, you're unworthy. Those mm. thoughts are coming from the enemy. Right? Yeah. There is an enemy out there. He doesn't like you. Remember that. He doesn't like yeah. you. He does. Yeah, he wants to see, he wants to make sure that you see yourself as a no good person, mm. not valued in God's sight. Yeah. But God will never say that to you. He'll never talk and tell you you're not valuable. In mm. vain I made you, you're a mistake. No. God's never going to say that. Yeah. This is how God sees you. He says, if you have received me into your life, if you're in Christ, you become a new creation. Amen. And what's amazing is God says all things are passed away. Yeah. So next time you get those thoughts that, that say, well, you're no good, your life is the way you've been before, you, you have no right to actually call yourself a new person. When those thoughts come, immediately say, no, yeah. I'm not going to believe those lies. I'm going to believe what God says about me, mm. right? It says, if any man is in Christ. So what you can do is, and what's so amazing about the Bible is that you can take verses and personalize it over yourself, yeah. right? Don't just read it, if any man. I like to put my name there and say, therefore, if I am in Christ. Yeah. So you can put your name and say, well, if I am in Christ, I'm a new creature. Yeah. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Yeah. Anytime those thoughts come into your mind that of the way you used to be and the way you used to live, stop and say no. I am in Christ. I am a new creature. Right. God has made me a new person. Yeah. 
You know, this is going to set you free. It truly has set me free the more I see myself in Jesus. Mm. God yeah. doesn't, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, um, it's going to make you bound if you see yourself in yourself, right? Yeah. Because yourself will want to remind you of the mistakes you made and you're not valuable and you're not like other people. Well, if you start looking at yourself that way, then that's not freeing at all. It's going to yeah. keep you bound the rest of your life, even though you have Jesus in your heart. Yeah. But God wants to set you free by reminding you to see yourself in Christ. Mm. And more on in the episodes, we're going to talk about this, this, um, these two words, in Christ. Yeah. These are powerful words. Yeah. Seeing yourself in Jesus, right? So for mm -hmm. example, if we see ourselves in Jesus, Jesus has healing. Mm -hmm. So that means I can have healing, That's right. right? Jesus is prosperous. That means I can prosper on this earth. Yeah. I don't have to live my life always. He, yeah. He promises to meet all our needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Mm. See, God doesn't look at your insufficiency anymore. He doesn't look at the lack that you have because He's a big God mm. and He's a rich God and He is able to meet all your needs if you simply believe in Him and trust in Him. That's right. Yeah. So Jesus has healing. We can have healing because yeah. it says if I'm in Christ. So Christ has healing which means I can have healing. Mm. And Christ is, He has a sound mind. That means I can have a sound mind. I don't yeah. have to constantly believe that I'm losing my mind all the time. That was your old self. Your old self may have been losing your mind. Yeah. When you come to Jesus, mm. you have a sound mind. He wants to give you a mind that is peaceful and free from worry and care and all those other things. Yeah. He wants to give you a peaceful mind. Mm. You've got to see yourself in Christ. That's really, really important. Mm. And uh, talking about all this, I'm reminded of a story in the Gospels of a man named Zacchaeus that Jesus came to and he ministered to this man life. See, let's go to the book of um, Luke chapter 19. And I'll paraphrase some verses. But I want you to see about this, how this man's life was totally transformed. Mm. It says here, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named, named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature, or Zacchaeus was a short man. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for Jesus was to pass that way. Mm. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw this man. And what's interesting is he was so eager to see Jesus that he climbed up a tree. Yeah. yeah. That is so amazing. Come to that. Yeah. That is yeah. so amazing. I mean, just think about it. A man so eager to see Jesus and yeah. he's short, by the way. Yeah. So he can't, um, he can't be in the crowd. He has to somehow climb a tree. Yeah, and he probably heard a lot of good things about Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was going around healing people who were sick and providing for people. And he was going and forgiving people of their sins and talking about this eternal life that God has come to give people. So this man Zacchaeus, he runs up a tree and he wants to see who Jesus is. And so um, verse 5, Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus and he doesn't just, you know, Oh, I don't know who that man is, so let's just quit. I don't know who he is. So I'm not going to find out who he is. But it says here he looked up. He didn't mm. overlook Zacchaeus. You know, just just because Zacchaeus um, may have he was a tax collector, by the way. So because he had done stuff, Jesus didn't just look at his you know his position or who he was and determine who he was going to meet. But Jesus looks up at this man, and I love what he says. He says Zacchaeus. Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. Mm. And so Zacchaeus, he quickly comes down and he receives Jesus joyfully. Mm. And um, well, people weren't too happy about it, right? Because they had different viewpoints of it. But Zacchaeus, he comes and he tells the Lord when, when he's in his house, he says, look, Lord, uh, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And verse 9 says, Jesus tells Zacchaeus, This day is salvation come to your house, for the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which was lost. So be encouraged today, whoever you are, Jesus wants to come and live with you and give you 
an enjoyable, abundant life. That's right.